Welcome back to yet another one of my late reviews. Today we're going to be going over one of my favorite smartphones, in fact the first Android phone I've ever used or owned, and that is the OnePlus 5. I think it's an excellent handset in 2019, and I'm here to tell you why. So beginning with design, back when this phone was launched, it was a little too similar to the iPhone 7 Plus, and that's not a bad thing. No, this is not a 2018 and newer phone. You know, you don't have a wider aspect ratio display. You don't have a glass back or anything or stainless steel, but this is still a really solid feeling device. One of the things I love about this phone is the slide switcher thing, uh, whatever you want to call it, the toggle switch, I guess. It's a really great feature to have. One of my favorite features of OnePlus phones, you can also find this on the iPhone. This is an exclusive feature with OnePlus. I don't think any other Android phone features this. Long story short, you can silence your phone without having to go into the settings, which is invaluable when you're in an environment when it'd just be rude to pull out your phone. You can just quickly toggle it and your phone's on silent. This phone also features USB Type-C, which is, you know, of course, standard now, but still nice to have. As for the speaker quality, it's not a tin can, but it's not like great OnePlus. You know, when they launched this phone, they tried to keep it at a budget price, uh, which is why they probably didn't pour a lot of money into it, but it's perfectly fine for listening to some music and, uh, you know, watching YouTube videos here and there. But this device also packs a headphone jack, so it really doesn't matter. You can plug in your favorite pair of headphones or wireless headphones, whatever you like. The headphone jack is still a nice addition. So yeah, as for the design, I mean, it's solid. It's made out of aluminum. They did not skimp anywhere here. It's a really nice feeling device, even till this day. As for the display, yes, this is not an 18x9 device, but the display they have here is great for watching YouTube videos, uh, viewing Instagram content, really anything you can think of. They got a 5.5 inch 1080p AMOLED display here with a 401 pixel per inch density. Um, the colors on this display look amazing. It's really punchy. The blacks are really black. The whites are really white. In other words, this display has great contrast. And once again, it's great for media consumption. I think you'll have no problem with it. Overall, although it's not a wide angle or excuse me, a wider aspect ratio display, but it's still really great to use as of this year. Moving on to the battery life, uh, you should have no trouble getting through the day with this device. When I was using it, you know, back in 2017 and 2018, uh, I was getting through the day with like five, six, maybe even seven hours of battery life. And even if you pushed it to the edge, like even if you gamed or recorded like 4K video for three hours, uh, dash charging comes with this phone. And although it's not the quickest quick charging on the market right now, you got Vuk and all these other crazy things from like Oppo and Huawei, um, you can still charge this phone uh, for 30 minutes and get you know like more than half of the charge, you know, already on your phone. So if you're a really heavy user and say the battery is degraded, because at this point, you know, you don't really know how the battery is going to fare. It really is dependent on, you know, who's using the phone. Say the battery is degraded a little bit, say it's like 80% integrity. You don't have to worry too much because you can just plug it in for a few minutes and get that charge that you were missing right back. Um, you should once again have no issue getting through the day with this device. I certainly didn't. And I'm sure if I switched to this now, I wouldn't at all. Uh, wireless charging is absent, obviously, and it's been absent in the more current versions of OnePlus phones, but that really isn't an issue once again with the quick charging and whatnot. So yeah, overall battery performance on this device is excellent. Moving on to camera quality, this phone, just gonna be straight up, was never supposed to be like this great shooter. With this phone, you get a 16 megapixel main shooter that's, you know, like wide angle, it has an aperture of f1.7, and then you have a telephoto camera that's 20 megapixels with an aperture of f2.2. You get 2x zoom, you get the portrait mode, and they both work okay. Although OnePlus, you know, hyped this all up with like this dual lens setup, they're putting money into their software experience and their hardware rather than the camera setup, which is understandable because me personally, I bought this phone for the software experience. So if that's your case and you have nothing to fear, um, it's not a bad shooter. It's like kind of like above mid range, but not really close to the higher end cameras that you'd find on like the iPhone XS Max and the uh, S10 Plus and whatever. Um, it shoots 4K video. This does not have uh, optical image stabilization. It has EIS and it has improved over time with software updates. You can, you know, get like the Google APK camera and shoot better quality pictures but i mean like from my experience shooting with this it's not like the best experience once again it's not like a low-end cheap phone but it's not by any means comparable to like the top dogs on the market uh pictures kind of have like this uh over saturated over sharpened look to them they're okay uh portrait images are okay i guess uh video is okay you know like the stabilization in some cases is really nice especially in 1080p video but for the most part, it just looks like an, you know, above average camera. It's not like the best, but not the worst. So, you know, if you're okay with that, then you're going to love the software experience, which I'm going to talk about next. And lastly, let's talk about performance and software experience. This is where this phone truly shines. 
And although I will say this phone has slowed down, you know, it has gracefully aged, I guess. This phone packs the Snapdragon 835. If you get the midnight black version with 128 gigs of storage, you get eight gigabytes of RAM. And this is still an amazing performer till this day. It's not quite as smooth as I remember, not quite as smooth as like my OnePlus 6, which I'm actually using to remotely control my camera here. Um, it's not, again, the smoothest on the market, not as smooth as the 6 and the 6T, but it's definitely smoother than most phones. Oxygen OS is just really nicely optimized. That is where OnePlus really puts their money. They put it into their hardware and they put it into their software. And that's where these phones, OnePlus phones in general, really shine. Oxygen OS, in my opinion, is in ways better than stock Android because they allow you to customize more things, you know, add accent colors and dark modes and whatever. Uh, and it's just really, really fast. You know, you can adjust the animation speeds and things just open like that. And multitasking, in my experience, has been excellent, especially with, once again, the 8 gigs of RAM on board. You should have no trouble at all getting through daily tasks with this phone. And even heavy or more hardcore tasks like some heavy games and maybe even video editing if you're so inclined. Um, this phone is still a monster, even compared to its younger brothers, the 6 and the 6T. Snapdragon 835 is nothing to sneeze at, even in 2019. The biometrics are great too. You got a fingerprint sensor on the front. It's super quick. You just tap your finger and you're already in. You also get the uh, facial unlock feature with this phone. It's actually pretty secure. Um, you have to do probably something more elaborate to trick it, maybe make like a mask or something, but you can't trick it with video or photo. And all you have to do is set it up. It takes like three seconds and then you just tap the power button and you're already in. In some cases, it's so instantaneous, it's jarring. Uh, that's why I like to add like a animation after I open my phone uh, with the facial unlock. But yeah, overall, when it comes to just navigating through the UI, you know, flipping through animations, multitasking and playing some games. This phone is an excellent performer. And if you're looking for some power, but at a more budget price, I highly recommend you pick this phone up. So I'm actually on eBay right now looking at the pricing for this phone, you know, used and you can pick one of these up for 200 to $250. And keep in mind, I mean, like, yeah, the battery might be a little degraded, you know, you might get a little scratched up device, but I'm telling you, this phone offers a stellar hardware and software experience, even to this day. I certainly love mine when I used it, and I think you'll definitely love yours if you pick one up. I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and subscribe for more content like this. I hope you have a happy Easter if you are a Christian or Catholic viewer of mine. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.